So open intelligence to have the direct introduction to it. The, an easy way to do this is to just stop thinking for a moment. If you try that now, if you just stop thinking for a moment, what's looking through your eyes, when you identify what's looking through your eyes, that is open intelligence. It's not a closed intelligence. It's vast like the infinite sky. It's alert and it's knowing. The power to know. So this open intelligence is what fuels all of our other thinking, all of our data. Data and the balance view training is perceptions, thoughts, emotions, ex experiences. It's the gap, it's the no gap. So you see life without open intelligence is, for me it was very complicated trying to make sense out of the world based on <coughs> fleeting appearances based on reified belief systems, assumptions, ideas, basing it on my ever-changing thoughts, basing it on my ever-changing emotions and sensations. So, yeah, in each moment we can really check in and see how I have all of your data, are, they're constantly changing. But what about your experience is not changing? What about your experiences is totally at rest, potent, and alive? Potent and restful. Even in the midst of something very energetic or brings up a lot of fear or worry or maybe the opposite of a lot of excitement and happiness. What about that experience is completely untouched, stable like the sky? clear like the sky. That open intelligence is always with us, regardless of the descriptions of the data. We have some friends joining in with the conversation. I really like to know that my mind is spacious as it is. Before this training, I was looking for a way to find more peace, more stillness. I thought that the space in between the thoughts is what I was looking for. That I felt like the thoughts were the problem, or the emotions were the problem, or the sensations were the problem. The only problem was putting the attention on the thoughts, the emotions, and sensations, and then looking for them to look a different way. When you start to rely on short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times, until open intelligence is obvious at all times, you see that it's present regardless if there are thoughts or no thoughts. Open intelligence fuels the very data we experience in every moment. Without open intelligence, you would have no sensations, you would have no emotions, you would have no thoughts. So open intelligence is required to know anything. More and more we see that whether or not there is stillness, and stillness, what is really stillness? Everything is already at rest anyway. Just like all of nature rests as it is in this great expanse, all of nature is already at rest. When you look out, it's at rest. Even all the chirping and all of the activity going on, it's at rest. The same with your internal data, the same with your own nature, it's already at rest. This allows us to be in life in a completely different way, no longer being a victim of the descriptions of the day. If you wake up in the morning and there's depression or sadness or anxiety, we find that we're not a victim of it when we let it be as it is. This becomes our direct experience the more we identify open intelligence in the midst of the flow of data. It's really the difference in relying on open intelligence versus conventional intelligence 
All of our life's energy switches, shifts, naturally transitions from one of being all wrapped up in self-concern or concern for a few people to the benefit of all. That's really what starts to happen. It doesn't happen overnight. It just really starts to unfold this natural desire to be of benefit to all. To live in the world, enjoying our lives and seeing that we actually contribute to many more people than we thought. So I've been hanging out in the Balance You community for about seven years now. When I first came, the benefit of all didn't mean so much to me. I just wanted peace of mind, less stress, better relationships, more enjoyment, wanted to know how to deal with my physical stress. So I had this list of things that I wanted to fix about myself. And actually all that stuff has been fixed. I really see that it was an effortless approach to letting everything be as it is and now all of that is not an issue anymore. Even if I feel tense or nervous or I don't know what to say, there's a relaxed ease at the basis of all this. You know, just speaking with all of you, maybe there's complete terror going on at the same time as total ease and relaxation. You know, who we are as humans is so easy and natural. It's not complicated. So making decisions from open intelligence, well, making decisions based on data is always looking for a special outcome. When we rely on open intelligence, the outcomes are, there's infinite possibility. But we, more and more we know it's, you know, whatever it turns out, it's going to work out all right. By hanging out in the four mainstays, taking short moments many times with making the decision. By participating in trainings where we are introduced to open intelligence, training up fully in our experience rely on a trainer and then spend time with the community, the decisions, the ones that seem so important, kind of lose their power. And then we effortlessly are able to make decisions. We can ask ourselves, what will be of most benefit? What decision can I make that will be of most benefit to myself and others? So it becomes very simple in that way. The nature of mind training it up to be of benefit to ourselves and others, where we get to enjoy life in a way that we hadn't enjoyed it before. <laughs> so easy. Making a big deal out of the fears and worries comes to a stop. It really does, like trying to plan where I'm going to go next. Maybe I don't know until a week before I go somewhere. That's actually okay with me now. You know, before I'd spend so much time trying to decide what's the next move and basing it on how much money it's going to cost. Will my family be accepting of my decision? Will my friends? If we have a partner, will our partner be accepting of what we want to do next? So it, there's so much. micromanaging going on when we base it on data. So I'm actually going to Australia next. Does anyone want to come? <laughs> I see a few hands there in the back. I've been to Australia once for two weeks and it seems like a good place to go. Wherever we go, there we are. If you're trying to go to a special place to find open intelligence, that special place is wherever you are. That's what's so powerful about short moments repeated many times. You access the intelligence of the universe in every moment. You don't need to be in a cave. You don't need to be on a mountaintop. 
You don't need to be in a special quiet place. You can certainly train up in these places if you like. It's nice to be out in nature where it's quiet and you can just reflect on the nature of mind. But it's also nice to do it in teamwork and service. When you're in service, all of the data streams will become very apparent to you. <laughs> you know, it's like if you go on these silent retreats and you're practicing up in the nature of mind or an idea of what you think it might be, and then you come back into a work environment and somebody says one thing that triggers an avalanche of points of view in you, what are you going to rely on? Do you need to run immediately back to that safe, quiet space? Or do you want to find out what is immediately accessible to let the data be as it is, to find that there is comfort, stability, regardless of what has just happened? You see, in the, in the service teams in Balance View, we really practice open intelligence living. It's a lifestyle. The Four Mainstays is a lifestyle. It just becomes completely integrated. So there, and then we can be wherever we like in the world, and we're all, we have that immediate support. We have the powerful short moments. You can take any of the training media with you. It's so powerful to be reminded on a daily basis, many times a day, that the nature of your mind is clear, potent, and at ease, regardless of the circumstance. That's what's helped me tremendously, just listening to talks or watching videos throughout the day, having a book with me to read. And then you'll hear that there are trainers in Balance View Many trainers. You can go on the clarity calls and ask questions. Come to the open meetings. When you go through the 12 empowerments training, you'll have a trainer that you can write to personally. I was going to use the word personal trainer, but that sounds like a fitness coach or something. A trainer. A trainer is like, it's just a powerful mentor or a role model or somebody that you can really share with and clarify everything rather than it being just a discussion, a back and forth of trying to confirm if we're right or wrong. Or, you know, like in the relationships, it's wonderful to find someone that will listen to you. But what I found in relationship is just a lot of data dumping, like having someone to relieve all of this stuff. Somebody that will just listen to you while you spew out all your stuff. That's just one aspect of it. I'm not saying that's how it always is. But it's just so relieving to know that we have someone that will listen to us, understand us completely. Actually, what I see here in this community is we all start to understand everyone very completely and totally. And we're not in partnership with everyone here. You just look out and you start to understand where people are at you know what somebody might need. It's not that difficult. But you see all of this data discussion where we need to discuss everything to find a solution uh, very quickly evaporates. It doesn't become our focus anymore. It's like if any problem is presented by relying on open intelligence, we see what is the empowering solution we can find here. What can I say to the other person? How can I help the other person? How can I listen to them more openly? How can I bring a solution to the situation? You know, that's what I see is, you know, the, the relationships are about love, joy, and service rather than managing data, rather than it being like this battlefield or conditional conditions, terms and conditions of a relationship. I will be in relationship with you if you do this, this, and this. And then the other person might have some conditions. And, you know, all of that w way of relating is just, it's not necessary anymore. So my relationship with my trainer is that I, I enjoy touching in with him like on a weekly basis or daily basis. I work on projects with him. I learn so much from him. I learn so much from all of the trainers in Balance View. You know, we're just amazing colleagues that 
there's not a underlying data stream of competition or competitiveness. You know, that's not our main focus. We just hang out together and have the most amazing time. You know, that's how all workplaces should be. The trainer just becomes really such a powerful friend. You know, that one person who you can totally confide in. If there are sensitive data streams that you don't feel comfortable asking in an open meeting or in a training, your trainer will be more than happy to clarify it with you without judgment, without reprimanding us and, you know, these old ways of relating. You know, I, I have so much appreciation and gratitude for my trainer, for Candace, the founder of Balance View, for all the trainers, all participants. This ever-expanding gratitude, appreciation, respect. And it's not something I've been cultivating. I don't sit in a meditation and try to cultivate any of this. It just naturally unfolds. When I see somebody who is totally available to support me, that humbles me in a way that hadn't, I hadn't been humbled before. So, you know, if you want to get to know your trainer more, just be in touch. Share what's going on in your experience. But not in a way that's just like a two-page long email or something. Just very concisely and, you know, where do you want support? Just directly asking, how can you support me with relationships? Or how can you support me with decision-making? Or how can you support me with money, food, sex, everything? And then the trainer will empower us to see that we have access to amazing solutions also. It's not that the trainer just gives you a list of antidotes or a list of options. It's like, how, by relying on the Four Mainstays, what solution do you start to see arising in your direct experience? Having access to the most beneficial solutions in each moment, however that looks.